anything you need to know. Who, what, when, where, why, how. You're watching Daily Bell Top. It's a pleasure to have today with us uh, Apollon Busserian, Professor and Program Director of the Dental Laboratory Program in Middlesex Community College, Doctoral Student in the Global Governance and Human Security. How are you, sir? Welcome to the show. Good, thank you. Thank you. Uh, nice, nice to be with you today. Nice to be with you as well. Before I start the interview, I would like to uh, uh, present to you my sincere condolences to the people of Lebanon. We are with you. I know what you guys are going through right now. Thank you very much. Appreciate right. it. Let's start. I know um, you and you're in the U.S. right now. And did you talk to anybody on, on the ground? Did they give you a, a detail about what's going on right now in Lebanon? Um, I do have family, so I spoke with my family, and thankfully they're all, all okay. Mm -hmm. They're not close to the explosion, but not too far, so they heard it. Um, and the reports that I got from there, from them particularly, is that um, the, the explosion is not known, but the devastation is um, extensive. Okay. And so there's a lot of people that have been affected. Um, I'm sure you've heard on the news that there's today, as of today, there's more than 155 uh, dead people and over 5,000 injured. Plus, there's 300,000 um, displaced because their homes were destroyed. Okay, the, the president uh, of Lebanon, Michel Haun, and said it uh, could be a negligence, an accident, or could be some missile. So. I know since October 2019, there was a political tension in Lebanon. People were protesting on the street against the government. Do you think the investigation will be credible? Um, at this point, I think um, the, the government is trying to blame somebody else. Um, the negligence is definitely from the government, uh, whether it's this government or the previous government or the governments before. Uh, because, um, as you know, any any minister coming into the govern government would uh, get the um, updates on the situation from the previous, the outgoing uh, ministers. So, <clears throat> I'm I'm pretty sure they're going to try to shift the blame to somebody else. So the investigations, if it's done internally, it's not going to be credible. And I heard also that uh, the president had refused. Uh, international um, investigations, which is concerning, because if they're going to have a cover-up, um, then that's that's how they would do it, that they would pr prevent an international investigation to take place. He rejected the United Nations investigation, but he asked uh, the French President Emmanuel Macron from uh, for satellite images uh, from the sky to see if there's any war plane uh, going down during uh, the explosion. What do you think about that? Um, I don't think anybody in Lebanon that I spoke to heard any planes flying over. Mm -hmm. And so this is probably um, an attempt to shift the blame uh, from their incompetence. Um, and that's why um, he's trying to ask France for uh, satellite images for planes. Uh, it's it's more of a distraction, and it's it's been used all over the, the world these days, as you know. We know there's a economic crisis in Lebanon, and the worst right. uh, economic crisis right now. After mm -hmm. the explosion, a lot of businesses are going down. What will have be happening in the future for the people of Lebanon? Because we saw on Thursday so many people on the street protesting against the government. Do you think the government will be able to unite the country to solve the problem? Um, to start with the government ability to unite the, the people, I don't think that is possible. The people have a complete distrust of the government of Lebanon and they're asking um, them to leave in, in order to get a new government that is more functional. Um, what I expect um, the economic situation to be from now on, the recovery from this explosion is going to be um, um, Herculean to, to overcome. And I think, um, well, the, the Lebanese um, or the Beirut Harbor or port 
is a very vital port for um, imports, especially for food. Uh, so 80% of the Lebanese food is, is imported through the uh, Beirut uh, port. And so the port is completely dysfunctional now. It's destroyed, so they cannot accept or receive any shipments. So from now on, I think it's going to be um, a matter of food security, um, and which would exacerbate the economic crisis. Um, and so it's going to be dire for the Lebanese moving forward. Uh, to rebuild is very complicated. Their, their purchasing power is very weak. Um, so they cannot rebuild what they have lost in this without international aid. And if international aid goes to the government, who knows if the people get it. Okay, the international aid, uh, since 1948, we know Israel and Lebanon, there's a big tension between those two countries and so many countries offer aid to Lebanon right now. Do you think uh, the government also asking for help? France are already ready to help the government and United Nations proposes help. Uh, Israel would like to help. Is it good, uh, is it okay to accept the uh, help from Israel right now? Absolutely. Um, so in the program that I'm, I'm in, we study um, uh, conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. And part of, part of conflict resolution is showing goodwill. And the step that Israel had taken is showing goodwill to the people of Lebanon. Um, and let me also go back to the conflict between Israel and the Arabs. Um, Lebanon is not in direct conflict as a state with Israel, but um, there are members or militias in Lebanon that are in direct conflict. Um, so if those militias are not there, I think there is an easy path for peace between Israel and Lebanon. Um, but these um, organizations uh, like Hezbollah, and before that it was the PLO that was launching attacks against Israel that created that tension between uh, Lebanon as a land rather than a state and a people, um, and, and Israel. So. Um, I think that problem could be solved, but with Israel showing that kind of humanitarian will and, and goodwill towards the Lebanese people, I think it's a good sign. And it would be foolish of the Lebanese not to accept, from my perspective, the way I see it. You know, the Hezbollah is very powerful in Lebanon. How are they going to look at this help from Israel? They're going to create problem and, and the country more tension? Well, Hezbollah is definitely not going to accept that uh, Israel would help. Um, and as we know, Hezbollah is aligned with Iran. It's involved in a war in Syria in support of the Assad regime, which is both of these countries, Iran and Syria, are um, in uh, animosity or direct conflict with Israel. Uh, and so therefore, Hezbollah would not go against their will in order to um, go towards peace or accept any any aid or help from Israel. We saw there's a protest for tomorrow in Lebanon. People mm -hmm. on the street protesting against the government. What needs to be done right now to uh, create a normal situation for the people of Lebanon? Um, so, as you know, you mentioned it earlier uh, that since October 17th, um, there has been protests against this kind of government. And so I think the, the protest continuing is not going to yield any fruits if the protesters don't have uh, a clear leadership or um, and uh, clear demands of what they want. And if they don't have support from international community, I don't think anything would be able to be accomplished uh, with these uh, protests. So while protests might raise awareness to their cause and to their plight, uh, change on the ground needs to, to be done uh, in a different way. And I think at this point, the Lebanese people have to unite um, because as we know, they're not united. Uh, there are still members who support different uh, political parties. And so <clears throat> if the Lebanese uh, unite, they can 
make a change. They can force a change. But at, at the current situation, uh, I don't think that is going to happen. It's going to be a protest, no matter how massive it is. It's going to fade away after a few days, few weeks. 20 port officials have been put on, uh, on the house of arrest. So the president, even people said, uh, uranium nitrate caused the problem. And since 2003, this uranium nitrate been at the port. Do you think this president should take responsibility of this problem? Absolutely. If this had happened in a different country, um, any country, uh, I think you would have seen at least tens of res resignations uh, from top officials. In Lebanon, we have not seen that. All we have seen is shifting the blame from them and they claiming that they're going to do an investigation. And I think the court officials are going to be scapegoated um, in order to, to shift the blame from the, these um, officials in the government to those poor people who are trying to do their work on a daily basis. And if, if they were really um, guilty, those uh, court officials, it's because they belong to parties that have supported them in their positions uh, at that at that port. So it, it's still that the, the problem is the cronyism that is going on and the corruption in the country that is rotting from the head. The Lebanon court supposed to give a verdict regarding the assassination of the prime minister in 2005 and they report the verdict. Do you think that will change and with the person who's uh, the responsible for the assassination will be punished by the, by the court? Um, <clears throat> well, this is an international body, so uh, I hope it has the authority and the, the power in order to carry um, its um, indictment, in order to bring those who were responsible to justice. Um, however, there are states involved that might uh, provide protection to these perpetrators or the ones who have um, um, carried on the assassination. So I don't know how much um, the international court has the ability to extract these people and then to bring them to justice. Uh, in cases when when the international court was able to extract these people and they they did the they carried out uh, the the punishment. Uh, like in uh, the Yugoslavian Milosevic, um, they have been able to indict him. Um, so, I mean, it's a hope. We hope that they can do something. But maybe with the current situation in Lebanon, that would give them more of a push to do something even more. Thank you, Professor Apollon, Pusardan. I hope things get well in Lebanon. I wish you the best to you and the people from Lebanon. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. Anything you need to know. Who, what, when, where, why, how.